It is Tuesday, which means it's time for another tutorial. And today we're going to be looking at the big one. We're going to be looking at providing liquidity on Uniswap version 3. But before we get into all of that, quick word from our sponsors. We all know the feeling of paying high fees and waiting for transactions to confirm when interacting with DeFi. Well, no more. Solana has built a fast censorship resistant blockchain where you can build and use crypto apps that scale today. The network supports thousands of transactions per second with fees less than a cent and over 500 validators. To learn more, head over to solana.com forward slash defiant to get started building and join this rapidly expanding community. Now, do you remember your first DeFi transaction? After juggling five or more tabs on your browser, you gaze at that Etherscan confirmation feeling that you just contributed to the future of finance. Except you got quickly lost in a world of gas prices, vaults, pools, hard forks to gens, and sushi chefs. Fortunately, Zerion got you covered. They built the dream tool for managing your portfolio. You can track all your token balances across wallets and chains, access every kind of DeFi asset, including indexes, pools, and yield strategies, and trade at the cheapest rates with no extra fees. And that is because Zerion sources liquidity from every decentralized exchange like Uniswap, 0x, and 1inch. There's no sign-up required, no fees, and a blissfully easy UI. Simply connect your wallet at app.zerion.io. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Now, let's get back into Uniswap v3. <clears throat> now, as we know, Uniswap in version 3 has introduced a completely different way of doing liquidity. It's range-bound liquidity. And what's really interesting is that the liquidity positions are not represented by tokens. They're represented by NFTs. And this is wild. When you go onto Uniswap and you look for Uniswap v3 positions, there they are. These are tradable NFTs, and they're actually kind of cool. So you have... For instance, SHIB wrapped ETH here, and what the <coughs> NFT will give you is the min tick and the max tick, which is basically representing the range that this particular position has been set in. We'll cover that in a second. So that is Uniswap v3 positions. Now, if we go to the Uniswap interface, uh, you obviously have to connect your wallet. And something I'm going to do now, which I never normally do, but I've been told that the pros all do it, I'm going to reach up into this top right-hand corner over here. Well, there's a little sun icon. I'm going to click it and wait and see what happens. Oh, yeah. You just entered dark mode. Because dark mode will definitely improve your sex life. This, I had been told, this is the truth. You heard it here first. Now, what we want to do now is not be on the swap tab. We want to be on the pool tab. And we're going to go and click on new position. They do have a little guide here to help walk you through with some lovely GIFs. Um, but we're going to go through some really basic stuff today. So we're going to go and click a new position. The pair that I'm looking at specifically is the ETH DAI pair. Now, there's all sorts of pairs on Uniswap. You can provide liquidity to all of them. You can even set up your own liquidity pools. That's not the purpose of today. We're just going to do something that a lot of people might be interested in, fairly standard pair. And there we go. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go on CoinGecko and have a look at the ETH chart. Now, <clears throat> this is, let's see, if we look at the, the last seven days, what we see is there's an uptick in volume. And that suggests that there might be some things going on in the market, but it suggests that there might be volatility ahead. And that's kind of why I wanted to have a look at uh, liquidity positions today, because it feels like the market might be about to move in one direction or another. Now, what we want to do when we're setting up an LP position on Uniswap v3 is have a really good think about where we want our liquidity to sit, and that is to define the range. So that's why we're looking at the chart right now, to decide where we want to deploy that capital to generate the maximum return. Now, you may decide, for instance, here, that we're sort of stuck between two stools here. There's this line around 2,600, and you see we've kind of hit it a couple of times. We went through it here, and now we're sitting in between. And then there's kind of another another level down here, about 2,200, where we bombed right through when the market had, had that horrible drop um, a week or so back. So this range between 2,200 to 2,800 is where Ethereum has kind of been sitting for some weeks now. 
So what we want to do is try and decide whether we want the range that we think Ethereum is going to trade in to be around here, which is between 2,600 and 2,400, or whether we think that this increase in volume here actually means the price is going to move up into this range here. And all of these decisions have a bearing on how we're going to set up our liquidity position. So let's go back now and have a look at the the pair that we just wanted to set up. So we've selected the, the pair, which is ETH and DAI. The next thing we have to do is set the fee that we want to charge. Now, basically, for, for a, a pair like DAI in USDT, where the, the market's not going to move very much, <coughs> excuse me, you want to go for these the lower fee um, because you're quite likely to get a uh, a trade within that range. For this one, we're going to go for the, the, the middle one, which is the 0.3% fee, which is best for most pairs, and in particular, it's best for this pair uh, because it's the ETH die pair, which is, can be quite volatile, and you really want that 1% fee for um, a more volatile pair, like a new token that's launching on the market. So we don't want to worry about that too much. So what we want to do now is set the price range. So we'll play around with a few different settings here to see how it affects the liquidity position. But what it does, it tells us the current price, which is 2,500 DAI per ETH. And we look back at the market, that's sitting right here between these two bounds. So this, this level here, 2,400, and this level here, 2,600, <clears throat> feels like a decent range to set up some liquidity within. So we start here, 26, uh, sorry, 2,400 for the minimum, 2,600 for the maximum, and there we go. So what that will do now <clears throat> is it will give us the option to deposit on both sides, on the ETH side and on the DAI side. So if you remember in the old version two liquidity, you had to set up 50-50 equally weighted on both sides of the pair that you wanted to uh, deposit into. So now we can decide how much of each pair we want to put in. So let's say I wanted to put in 500 DAI. I've set this up already. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna delete that and show you what happens. Okay, so if I say 500 DAI, down here, then it will automatically fill the ETH amount 50-50, <clears throat> uh, so equally weighted. So if I set the upper boundary <clears throat> on the max price, look what happens. I need more ETH. I need more ETH. And as I move it up, I need more and more ETH. <clears throat> so basically what this means is when the ETH price moves up, we need to supply more ETH. And equally, if we said we wanted to move the, uh, the price down, we would need to supply more DAI. So now let's just have a look at a different range. So let's say, for instance, <clears throat> we think that the price is gonna move back into this kind of clear range here. So 2,800, 2,600. <clears throat> so we now go, now go back in, change the range, 2,600 and 2,800. You'll see now that it says your position will not earn fees or be used in trades until the market price moves into your range. But what we're basically doing is saying, I'm making a bet on the future price of <clears throat> ETH to die. And once we enter that range, because I think we're going to enter that range, then I'm good to go. Uh, so, you know, you could look at this and look at that rising volume and think, okay, we're going to move back up. Uh, equally, you could think, oh, actually, we're going to move back down. But if we look and what happens now, we can only deposit. ETH, not DAI, only ETH. And that is because we're out of range. So this is where you get into a single-sided uh, liquidity provider position. So you're not supplying DAI and ETH, only ETH. Now look what happens if we set the price on the, on the lower side of the range. So now we're gonna set it from 2,400 to uh, 2,500, just for example's sake. Now we can only supply DAI. So when the price moves into that range, we're going to be supplying DAI to the market. And that is because when the price is moving down, people are selling their ETH and they want DAI. Equally, when the price is going up, people are selling their DAI and they want ETH. So you, <clears throat> you're supplying liquidity where it is most required. But for the purposes of this, I want to set quite a broad range. I'm going to set that a range that captures this whole idea here. So actually, I probably want to go from 2,400 to 2,600, as I did before, because I feel like we're we're in a, a range that might sit there. Uh, I mean, we're betting on the market here. Who knows what's going to happen? It's volatile. But now we can supply both sides. 
I said 500 die before. So now what I need to do is approve the die. Not too expensive today. And now we fast forward. <laughs> So now we're back and we've approved our DAI. All we need to do now is click on Add and this will set up our liquidity provider position. So we do that. <clears throat> it will tell us the min price and the max price. And now we just go and click on Add. And that will confirm. So you see here, it's a multi-call. That means it's doing a bunch of different things all at the same time, which hopefully we'll save on gas. So the gas is $24. I mean, it's not cheap, is it? I was doing some stuff on Terra today and it was 24 cents, which is also not that cheap, but it's definitely a lot cheaper than that. So we'll set that up and now we wait. Speed it up again. And there we go, it is done. We have a Uniswap V3 liquidity position. If we click on it, it will show us exactly what that position is and it will show us the NFT as well. So there it is, it's as simple as that. There are a few things that you have to do uh, and there's a little bit of a thought process that goes into how you design your LP position, but effectively this is as simple as that and you can set it up however you want. You can make a bet on the future, you can make a bet on the now, you can do single-sided, you can see double-sided. It's very effective. And if you don't want to even bother with that, you just want to go and pick up an LP position on on OpenSuite. OpenSuite. If you want to pick up an, an NFT LP position on OpenSuite, you can also do that. Amazing. Uh, there you go. Hope that was useful for you. That was our tutorial on Uniswap version three liquidity provision. I will see you on the next one. Peace.